Hey everybody, this is Woofer Walker Jezebel's Wednesday afternoon Woofer Walk. And that would be me, Woofer Walker Jezebel. Not that, that's Ella. Ella the pit bull beauty. Ella Summers. And behind her is Ruby Parker, the lovely golden doodle. And behind her, the black and white, is Zeke Newton. Probably a Border Collie and Eskimo mix of some sort. And here's little Cedar Cook. She's a Morky, a little girl, little teeny one. Maltese and Yorkie. Maltese and Yorkie Terrier. And that lovely yellow girl that looks like a small lab is Layla Powell. She's actually a Formosan Mountain Dog. Formosan Mountain Dogs originally come from the Formosan Mountains in Taiwan. Who else? Do, oh, and then there's little, little Charlie. Little Charlie Newton here. He's a rescue from Korea. Hi, Charlie. He's um, definitely got some kind of some kind of Spitz breed in him. But we're not really sure exactly what he is. I think he might have some Pomeranian because he's got that fluffy tail. I don't know. Whatever he is, he's adorable. Just gonna check for the poop down here. I saw somebody had to do a poo. Okay. Well, that's a hard one to find, so I'm gonna have to do a karma poop pickup. That's what I call it. When we pick up somebody else's poop. <sighs> one of the rules of thumb when you're, when you're a professional dog pack walker, AKA woofer walker, um, you know you're gonna miss a poop once in a while. So what we do, just to make sure that everything is even Steven in the cosmic, world in the cosmos um i pick up i pick up a poop that doesn't belong to us one poop that doesn't belong to us for each member of my pack that way if i missed anybody anybody's poopies in my pack <laughs> speaking of poopies um then i know that uh at least we're even Steven in the cosmos, in the cosmos, right? Okay, I'm just gonna clean up this poop. One second. Got it. Got the poopies. And here we go. Oh, right by the garbage can. Good girl, Cedar. Good, good, good time to poop. Good pooping. Good poop management time management skills there. Come on, Layla. So for anybody that watches my morning woofer walks that I normally do out in Delta, you'll notice that you'll notice that my afternoon groups are a lot different than <laughs> than my morning groups. Um, the groups that I take out to Delta in the morning are a lot big are a lot bigger and um, more the the, uh, the intensity is higher N don't hump your friend Layla don't hump your friend friends don't let friends don't hump friends um, the intensity is higher we have a lot higher energy uh, larger for the most part larger and higher energy woofers in the morning group that I take out um, the reason why the pack is so big in the morning is because I'm training two woofer walkers right now. So I like to train my walkers so that um, they're used to having a pack, a, a, like a really big pack to watch. And um, it's a safe way to do it because there's three of us for about 10 woofers. And um, this way they're used, they, they develop the skills to watch 10 dogs. And then when they're on their own, finally, they only have to watch six and um, they're really, then they're overskilled. Then it's really easy for them. So that's, uh, that's what I do. That's how we train our woofer walkers. I find it's really effective. Hey guys. Come on, Sadie. 
Hey Ruby. Hey Ella. Come on guys. Hey Layla. It's a pretty warm afternoon again. I mean, we're not in a heat wave anymore, thank goodness. But um, it's warm. It's probably like 25. I'm thinking out here anyway. It's always warmer out here on the service trail. Once we get down to the beach, it's uh, nice and cool usually, even during the heat wave, because you're right next to the river. There's, all, there's, usually, <laughs> there's usually a nice breeze by the river. Thankfully, the service trail here, even though it's really warm, um, it, uh, it's pretty, pretty nicely, evenly spaced out between stretches of sun, sunny patches and stretches of long stretches of shady patches before we get down to the beach. So that's nice. Very nice for the, for the furry friends, of course. That little Morky cedar is uh, <laughs> quite enjoying chasing Ruby and Sadie. Sadie, come here. Sadie, come. I don't want Sadie to go down into the duck pond, so I'm calling her now because that's where the duck pond is. Sadie, come. Ruby, come. Come here. Come here. Come here. Touch. Sadie, come. Sadie, come here. Good girl. Oh my goodness. Touch, touch. Good girl. Okay. So when I call them to me, I don't leash them. Unless, of course, I was calling them to me for a reason, like there's danger up ahead or whatever. But um, if you're just practicing recall, which we do quite often when we're out walking with her, um, it's, then you don't leash them when they come to you. You just say touch and you let them go right away again. The reason why we do that is so that <laughs> they don't associate us calling them with being leashed and us taking their freedom away and their fun away. And that way you can rest assured that when you really do need them to come to you because there's some danger or something. Sadie, no duck pond. Oh, is it a good touch? Can you touch? Can you touch? <gasps> good girl. Okay, go. Okay, go. Um, that way you know they're going to come when you really do need them to come to you, when you're not just practicing. Right, guys? <sighs> Hi there. Sadie, no. Get out of there. Good girl. See, she's listening so good today. Didn't go down to the duck pond. Good girl. If I don't pay attention <laughs> and... Um, I'm not on her, like reminding her that I'm watching her for this stretch. Um, she will go down there if she notices that I'm not paying attention. So for that purpose is why um, it's important to um, continue letting them know that you have eyes on them. Right, guys? Yep. Good girl, Sadie. What a good girl. Good listening, baby girl. Good girl, Ruby. Good girl, Layla. Good girl, Cedar. Good girl, Ella. There are a lot of girls today, this afternoon. Good boy, Zeke. Good boy, Charlie. Charlie's always, always, well, not always, but a lot of the time, Charlie is way back there, bringing up the rear of the pack. He's funny, though. He's, he's, a, he's a real moody guy, because sometimes he's way ahead of us. Sometimes he's the first one to go down to the beach. Come on, kids. You might notice that I have woofers of all different sizes in here. I've got this little teeny one. Like I said, the Morky, Maltese and Yorkie cedar. Um, that's because this is one of our regular, I like to call it regular woofer walks, where um, it's not specific to any particular size. We have woofer walks for, you know, big breed, high energy uh, woofers. And then we have 
for like the little toy breeds like this, we have the Munchkin March, where it's mostly just little shishi foo foo babies like that, peppered in with a few maybe large breed seniors that um, that prefer a lower intensity woofer walk. So we're almost to the se se to the secret beach. So I'm going to shut off the camera, and I'm going to make a video when we get down there. 